Good morning, chaps. What you're looking up here is Holmes Road in Retford. This is part of the Spittle Hill estate, if you like, where I did most of my growing up. Anyway, that's me mum's house on corner there, and that's uh, that's my car. So, Stu is like kind of a carer for my mum, if you like, but not quite. And uh, he's got the van here today, so I've come to collect the van. Here's Gemma. She's Marty with me. I told you! Brilliant. I beat my own at her and made a jump. Uh, so, yeah, we've come to collect the van because we're nipping over to B and Q to pick up um, some uh, hollow clad or some type of PVC splashback for the cask washer. Did I make you jump with a horn, Gem? Yeah, and two women alongside van. Did you not see that? I did, yeah, that's what made me want to do it even I more. Swore. Yeah, I was laughing so hard. Anyway, let's have a cruise across to B&Q's and see what they've got. I don't think they're gonna have exactly what I want, but fingers crossed, they'll have something that we can use. So we've just left B&Q. Uh, we were having such a good time in there, I actually forgot to get the camera out. I was gonna do a little bit of sneaky filming in there, but we never had a chance. Uh, but unfortunately, they didn't have exactly what I wanted, so we're gonna go across to a fascia company now which I know does have what we want, but uh, I was under the impression it was closed, but they are open. So we're back from B&Q, and as you can see on the deck there, from Discount Fascia, is the soffit, the holoclad soffit we're gonna use for going around the back of the cask washer. But on the way in, we've been home, and we've picked up the smelly dogs. So when we got back, hello boy, Reggie, had chewed through a letter from the bank. Yay, well done, Reg. And uh, Chance is just a Mardi bum, because Reggie's bothering him. So we thought we'd bring him to work. But we have to trap him up here so they don't attack the delivery drivers. Isn't that right, Reg? So he's stuck behind a cask stacker at the top of the stairs to keep him up. He's not figured out yet that he could actually escape through that gap there, but hopefully. Look at his cute face. <laughs> oh, no, get down. We don't want you jumping, mate. No suicides in here, please. So we've got a splash back on the cask washer. I'll talk you through it if we come around the back here. I've just got that tantalised timber that we picked up from B&Q, DIY.com. And we put a little bit of a frame around, supported it by fixing it to the tanks at the top, and then making sure that the internal section is flush with the back of the tanks. That means that when we put the hollow clad on, that the clad runs back into the tank, and any splashing thereafter will go back into the corresponding reservoir tank. And now I've got a bit of hollow angle. This stuff on the back's hollow clad. And this is hollow angle or hollow soffit, they might call that stuff as well. This is hollow angle. It's basically the same stuff. That's why they call it hollow angle, because it's hollow on the inside. And then this kind of stuff, I think it's got a 70 and 100 mil profile. I can't quite recall. But it's got a slight bevel and it'll fit into the tongue and groove slot on the hollow soffit therefore giving us a nice seamless finish on the inside and there we go this is made out of pvc as well so it should stand up to a fair amount of chemical abuse particularly the caustic and the acid anyway it's fine and then for the top we're just going to get another piece of hollow angle <laughs> We're just going to run it along the top like that to enclose, this is probably a better position to show you, to enclose that top section so you can't see all the hollow bits on the top there, don't get stuff crawling down them. And that should allow me to seal on the inside, down in the corners, fill these gaps in. And we'll have then a functioning cask wash area, which should be relatively leak free. And look a little bit better than two pieces of plastic screwed to the top. 
And all this has cost me just a, a journey out to B&Q. £22 for the hollow clad, but I've still got full length down there, so we could call it 10 quid. And then £10 for a pack of tantalised tile lat, essentially, is what this is. Very simple build. And then we've, of course, still got to talk about the control panel a little bit more. That will be on another video. Is somebody ready to go home? Or walk? Want to go for a walk, Reggie? Definitely does. Before the light goes, we've just got a little bit of light outside. Anyway, here it is. So let's zoom out a touch. There you can see. It's sealed. It's complete. And I've used a bit of white plumber's mate to seal it. Oh, I forgot to go under there. I've done that bit, though. But, yeah, I'll just run under that section there. And then everything else has been sealed. And I think this will last at least until next year, if not beyond, for when we need to build a fully stainless steel cask washer, which we'll be able to just hook up to that control panel. It's this that needs replacing. But I think we'll get many a good wash out of this yet. Oh, look at them both straight off. They know where they're going. Reg! Up! Good boys. Go on, Chance. Up! Good lad. Look at his fat ass. We're going for a walk, boys. Watch your head. Get their uh, leads, which are hung up here. Excuse the shaky camera work, but this is how we're grabbing the vlogs these days, I'm afraid. Until we've got a bit more time. So I'm just bun <laughs> bunner. I'm just going to stick the padlock on the brewery. Because Stuart's still got to come in and pick up his van key. And we're going to go and walk the dog, see if we can catch a little bit of the dog walk before it gets completely um, dark. Right, it's getting dark. I've turned the thing off so I don't know what time it is now. It's just gone four o'clock anyway. We've got the dogs in the back and this is Bevercoat's pit top. And what I'm gonna do is there's a nature reserve that way where there will be a few dog walkers. I'm gonna go up that track there. You see that muddy track? That's gonna take me onto the old pit head and we're gonna do a bit of a run with the dogs. So I hope they're happy about it. What do you think, boys? Shall we go? Yes, we will. I like to go up there, you see, because I don't need to put them on the lead. And I think I've covered all the dangerous holes now. Anyway, let's go. Right. We're on the pit top proper here. And I think, if you worked here before, you'll correct me if you know, I think this is the cap for the pit head. You see the massive shaft kind of runs around in a circle, comes back around here. We can almost walk it. If you look at this, it goes all the way around. Looks like there was a building of some type, foundations. And uh, yeah, I think this was the pit top and we're walking on the top of the covered over shaft. What do you think? Anyway, I've just been past the section where the deep access shafts are over there and the coverings that I put on top of them are still there, so don't look like we've had any idiots up here exposing them again. Uh, but we only pass them on the way in and then the circuits that I do kind of follow that tree line all the way around there, all the way around, then we come back down these pine trees here where the car park is if I showed you on a previous video then I come back along this ride here over over the section and round again so I'm gonna carry on well I've killed my time because I followed the bloody dogs down this pathway thinking it was a shortcut to get back onto the track uh, it's not so I'm in thick bloody forest Work out, pause. Yeah, I know it is, love. Right. Oh, God. I think I can see path. I can certainly see exit. 
Let's get through these brambles. I mean, I'm in bloody shorts, man. Oh, God. Look at Reggie. Doesn't bo bother him one bit. Workout resumed. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, well, it was kind of a long-winded way of getting back on the track. Oh, my gosh. I can safely say I won't be going that route again. We'll stick to the path. Oh, goodness me. Right, off we go, boys. Listen to that cadence. Oh, shit. Right, I've just hit the 3K mark. And I think it's getting too dark underfoot to see. Particularly on a pit head. So, oh, there we go, I just tripped over. Right, well, that's all the encouragement I need. We'll take it back to the car, which should take us over to about three and a half K and uh, call it a day. What do you think, boys? I'd hate for him to find a new pit shaft in this uh, dark bottom. There'd be no chance of ever getting him out. So uh, I'll call it a day, folks. So there we go, I may as well wrap it up while I'm out here. I can get straight home and edit the video and get it online. Hope you enjoyed. And uh, with any luck, we'll be back tomorrow. That's two back to back so far, so that's not bad going, is it? I think we'll go back this way. <sighs> yeah. Right, see you later, boys and girls. See you later, Chance. See you later, Reg. Back in the car. That's what I mean by getting dark. I'd have had to run through that. Yeah, no thanks. See you tomorrow, folks.